goes into them little thing on the feet. My poor get them same. That's good if you just want them pieces off. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, here we are back on part two of the Tri-City Laser uh, install. And again, this is uh, over in Forest City, North Carolina at Tri-City Laser. They do the laser welding. They've got several laser cutters and this was their newest addition to the laser cutting fleet that they have there. A 3000 watt Prima CNC fiber laser. It's their first fiber laser. Their other laser cutters are CO2 machines a little bit older uh, style technology. So uh, first thing I want to say is a big thanks and shout out to both Robin and Chris over there at Tri-City Laser. Um, if it hadn't been for those guys, I, this, this install would not have gone uh, like it did, even though we did have our own share of problems on the way or along the way. On my way over there, about a thousand miles from Texas over there, I had gotten back up into the back of the trailer uh, of the truck to check on something with the gooseneck and somehow twisted myself the wrong way and threw my lower back out and I could barely walk by the time I got there. And when I got there, I offered to, um, you know, just let them unload the machine and then I would go back home, uh, get my back nursed back into health and, and then fly back over there. But they said, no, nah, don't worry about it. You know, we'll, we'll have, you know, we'll handle the uh, crawling around the machine and the physical work. And then, you know, you can here, be here to, to guide us along. And uh, the three of us worked well together. And, you know, there's, I've done a few of these installs now and I, there's really kind of a couple of approaches. Um, these guys, you know, are looking at this as an investment and treated me like a business partner and they really took ownership of the machine, which is super important because the, the minute I walk out of there and leave, it's gonna be up to them to run it. So whoever is gonna be buying a machine for me, it's in your best interest to take ownership of the machine as soon as I get there. And, um, you know, and some of the other ones I've done, they've just kind of like left me to it. And then when I'm done, it's like they're looking at, staring at a bank, blank slate, don't really know what they're looking at. So anyway, uh, you can see that they used a 30-ton crane. This uh, Hutchins uh, rigging company here, who was local in the area, uh, did a fantastic job. He had access to all kinds of equipment, and he elected to bring his 30-ton mobile crane out there to get this unloaded. I had about 9,000 pounds in total on the back of my trailer, and the main part of the laser body, I think, weighed between five and 6,000 pounds. And uh, you can see they just lifted it straight up here. And then we pulled the trailer out. And then the rest of the way you can see of, uh, you know, getting it unloaded and, and pushing it into position. Uh, a couple of things that you wouldn't really think about, but a, a pallet jack and a floor jack work extremely well maneuvering these bodies around, uh, getting them into place. And uh, you don't really need a lot else other than that. If you got dollies, that works great. Uh, although, you know, not necessary. All right, so once the machine got positioned into place, we moved on with uh, getting the rest of the machine installed. You can see the laser head here. And the laser head has several in entry and exit points for the water cooling uh, that enters and leaves uh, different parts of the head. And then here you see some of the laser power source wiring. And, you know, it connects into the PC, connects into the main cabinet, you know, lots of wiring going on there. And from machine to machine, that can be a little bit different and, you know, it could be a little bit uh, confusing to sort out, but, you know, just a process to work through. Um, we ended up having a, a problem here with, um, actually a couple different problems, but 
the main problem we had was um, with the solenoids for the out for the air valves and um, so you were just looking at the water chiller uh, the laser source and the uh, power conditioner and and all that that you know powers the machine so you know if you looked at the the wiring on the these are the two air valves or air solenoids one for nitrogen one for oxygen and if you hit the purge button on the remote uh, you can hear it clicking the solenoid but it would not open the valve to let the gas flow through and so we're just checking the voltages and verifying we were getting 24 volts dc to the right place and again you can hear the click there of the solenoids uh we verified that we had again you can you can hear the clicking there but again it should open up and allow all that pressure to come through and you should hear it purging just a rush of air coming through just verifying that we had you know, pressure on the regulators and nothing happening on the purge so after some troubleshooting on that with uh, the prima engineers in china we were able to determine that we needed some replacement air valves and prima is uh excellent at responding to situations like this and they air freighted in what we needed but it was going to take three or four days five days maybe it's a little bit you know kind of an unknown thing well, we got uh, getting there. an air freight package in from china so uh, i went ahead and elected so we'll to go home and then i flew back a week and a half and later and we picked back up on the train that you see in session here and the the lift height that's good the cut the nozzle height is good let's change the focus there from 0.09 to 0.02 let's say let's say 0.03 just to, because we're going to go we're going to add the nozzle height of 0.016 to the thickness of material mm -hmm. or no it would be point yeah 0.03 so negative 0.03 that should be good let's save that Good. Point. 